You are now listening to Mortal Kombat, Episode 1, Journey into the Unknown. Welcome listeners, my name is John Paul Davis and I am so happy for you to be here. It has been quite the journey I have had. The Mortal Kombat tournament has been around for centuries, but just one death could change the course of history forever. I can retell this story, but it will not be happy. Anyone can die, and anything can happen. Trust no one. And lastly, there is no true good and evil. Only chaos. This story starts in a very horrible place. Outworld. Outworld is a cold, desolate world where bounty hunters kill for sport and great cities thrive on conquering others' land. The planet is filled with vast deserts, deep dark forests, and large bodies of water. Millions of creatures that live to kill hide between the bushes, waiting for some idiot to walk right past them. Let's just say it's not the best tourist attraction. The capital city is where all the fun happens. The big city is not only where the bounty hunters go to collect their money, but it is home to the royal family, the emperor of Outworld. Ruling over with an iron fist, civilians are scared of what the Emperor can do. In the capital city, there seems to be a fight going on in the big Colosseum. But it isn't just any regular fight, is it though? Why don't we take a peek? The stadium is such a dark place where souls linger around. So many lives were lost. The sand soaked in the blood of fallen warriors. The sky was booming with sunlight. It was blinding. A huge crowd screamed and yelled in excitement for the next fight. In the middle of the crowd laid a throne covered in gold, diamond, and many other priceless treasures. Sitting on the throne is Shang Tsung, the sorcerer. Not much is known about Shang Tsung, only that he is the right-hand man of the emperor. From what we see, he is an old man that follows his master's orders like a dog, always wearing ancient robes and capes, hiding away his scars. The people of Outworld view him as a man not to be messed with, which he is. With his broad accent, he spoke to the crowd. Welcome, everybody, to the fourth annual Mortal Kombat Finals, he said with a loud tone. The crowd cheered as Shang Tsung laughed maniacally under his breath. (laughs) Ha ha ha! That's the excitement I like to hear. Before we introduce the champions, why don't you meet the trainers? The crowd cheers more as two figures walk out of dark hallways right next to the throne. The two figures were a man and a woman. The man was tall and skinny. His skin was as pale as the sand that lay below. He wore a white jumpsuit made of old and raggedy cloth. The man wore a straw hat that covered most of the top half of his face. He looked around 60 years old. He had a big stick that he used for walking. 
The man stands beside Shang Tsung's throne, completely still, lifeless. As for the woman, she looks very strange. She has barbaric armor on, colored dark red and gray. She has metal plating on her chest and knees. As for her body, she has darker skin and is very muscular. She has four sharp horns sticking out of her head. She has a large, dark mohawk that stands up high. But her most noticeable feature is that she has four arms. Each arm was covered with metal armor and leather gloves. The crowd cheers as these two figures walk out of the hallways, both figures standing next to Shang Tsung, looking down at the arena. Shang Tsung begins to speak. Well then, on the right side, we have Queen Shiva of the Shokan. The Shokan is a very furious species. They built their empire from the blood and bones of their enemies. While Outworld has many different kingdoms and races across the lands, you go to sh the Shokan if you need an army, if you have a battle to win. Queen Shiva is the leader of the Shokan and one of the Emperor's trusted allies. Ha <laughs> ha Thank you, Shiva, for training our world's next champion. You are very welcome, sorcerer. She says this in a very smirky tone. On the left side, representing the Earth Realm, the God of Thunder, Raiden. The crowd boos at the man we learn to be Lord Raiden. Lord Raiden is an elder god from the stars. Not much is known about them, but those elder gods are chosen to look after all the realms. Raiden watches and protects the Earth's realm, but his people don't even know he exists. You can tell he is not human, with his bright glowing eyes and almost robotic posture. The god speaks with his deep voice. I am pleased to be here. Shang Tsung looks at Raiden with a smile. That is wonderful. You both have brought me challengers that have far proven their skill. They have fought their way through the tournament and are ready for their last battle. The crowd roared in excitement as the gates below inside the arena began to open. Intense music begins to play as battle drums go off. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's introduce the challengers. Cheers and yells begin. On both ends of the arena, a figure walks out. On the left side, representing Outworld, the deadly, bloodthirsty warrior king, the legendary Shokan, Goro. Goro the Destroyer walks out into the arena, a big four-armed warrior with two spiked clubs in hand. Goro yells to the crowd, Ha ha! And on the right side, representing Earthrealm, the newbie Shaolin monk, Kung Lao. Kung Lao walks out on the gateway, and he does look underwhelming compared to Goro. He looked about 5'8 and built well, but from the looks of it, he was just a man. He wore a basic black and orange tunic with a big metal hat. This hat was lined with a sharp blade. Now that we have our champions out here, we can explain the rules. Three rounds. The first person to two knockdowns win. If you get that win is up to you. How you get it is up to you. Use any force necessary. That includes murder. Do you two understand? Goro yelled out to the crowd. Goro understands perfectly! The crowd cheers. Kung Lao then responds. I understand. I got this, Raiden. 
Raiden smiles back. Well then, let the fights begin! The two opposing sides stare down at each other deeply, both not making a single move. Goro takes the sand as he is about to run. Kung Lao just stands completely still. Goro then rushes at Kung Lao with heavy speed. Goro jumps high in the air, readying his club above his head, ready to strike. Kung Lao then looks up and dodges in an instant. Goro lands on the ground, confused and angry. Kung Lao gives a small smirk as he then grabs hold of his hat and throws it directly at Goro. Goro attempts to jump out of the way, but Kung Lao's hat cuts Goro's arm. Goro yells as his arm starts to bleed, but he is far from down. Kung Lao sees his hat across the arena, landed in the sand. He tries to run for it. Goro stops him, though, and hits Kung Lao straight in the stomach with his club. Pow! Kung Lao goes flying. Crowd cheers for Goro. Goro then rushes at Kung Lao, throwing one huge punch to his face. Boom! Goro attempts to throw another punch, but it's blocked by Kung Lao's arm. Kung Lao then throws a punch right to Goro's chest. Goro stumbles back. Kung Lao then jumps in the air and kicks Goro right in the face. Goro looks around quickly and sees his club. He quickly grabs it and hits Kung Lao straight in the hip. Kung Lao falls to the ground. The crowd starts to count. Five, four, three, two, one. Kung Lao fails to get up in time. Point one to Goro. Kung Lao looks up in defeat, knowing Goro only needs one more point to win. Kung Lao stands up and readies his fist for round two. Ha <laughs> ha Goro thinks this is too easy! Kung Lao grows angry as he gets ready. Okay, round two. Fight! Kung Lao instantly rushes Goro, and he starts to throw punch after punch after punch in his chest, face, arms, and legs. Goro pushes Kung Lao away. Kung Lao makes a stance with his right leg forward and his left leg back. Kung Lao jumps in the air, landing a hard kick right into Goro's jaw. Goro falls straight to the ground. The crowd starts to count again. Five, four, three, two, one. Point to the Earth Realma. Raiden smiles down at Kung Lao. Kung Lao yells to the crowd as he starts to get cocky. Goro's face fumes with rage and anger. Goro gets up, ready for the final round. Kung Lao faces Goro with a smile. Is that all you got? Goro's eyes burn with fire. Final round! Fight! Both challengers lunge at each other, both throwing punches but both missing. Goro manages to kick Kung Lao in his shin, knocking him down to his knee. Goro then proceeds to pummel Kung Lao's face, hitting punch after punch after punch. Bloody Kung Lao tries to block, but Goro's other two arms hold him down. Goro throws one final punch, fully knocking Kung Lao out. The crowd starts the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Point. Winner! The crowd cheers for Goro as he stands over a bloodied and bruised Kung Lao. Raiden looks down in disappointment and sadness. <laughs> Finish him. Goro looks up at Shang Tsung and smiles. Raiden looks at Shang Tsung in disbelief. Damn it, sorcerer! Don't do this! Shang Tsung laughs in Raiden's face. Sorry, Raiden. Those are the rules. Goro proceeds to grab Kung Lao's sharp hat and hover it over Kung Lao. Goro takes one good look at the crowd, then raises the hat over his head. Then in a repeated fashion, Goro landed the hat into Kung Lao's skull, again and again, till the whole top half of his brain was gone. Blood soaked everywhere as the hat dripped onto the now lifeless face of Kung Lao. Shang Tsung laughed under his breath. 
Fatality. One hundred years later, 2022, Earth Realm. Our new story begins in a monk dojang in Henan, China. The Wuxi Academy is a top-of-the-line dojo where the greatest warriors are trained. Students learn martial arts and other forms of karate. They learn to use their heart and love as strength. Master Borai Cho trains his students to be the best of the best. The day was cloudy. The dojo was very quiet and calm. It was early in the morning. The students were still fast asleep, except one. This one student was in the gym since 5 a.m., practicing. Right in front of the punching bag, he hit and kicked and hit and kicked. This student was focused. All of his surroundings were out of his mind. He was just thinking of his next enemy. Stay focused on the fight is what rushed through his head over and over again. Master Bo Raicho watched from afar. He looked at his student and was impressed. The master spoke to his students to get his attention. I think you got him, Liu Kang. Liu Kang looks behind himself and smirks when he sees his master. Master... I didn't know you were up. Bo Raicho laughs at Liu Kang's comment. You think you can be up before me? <laughs> Liu Kang smiled as he turned back around to do more training. You are stressed, Liu Kang. Liu Kang stops for a second and thinks. Well, this whole thing today, I'm a bit nervous. Like, doesn't he only pick one person? Yes, but you are one of my best students. I know you have an amazing chance. Obviously, I can't hold a bias. Liu Kang nerves lessened. Just give yourself a break. Bo Rai Cho walked out of the gym, and Liu Kang decided to tr stop training for now. As Liu Kang goes out of the gym, another student goes to talk to him. Good morning, Kung Lao. Wait a minute. You are confused. Didn't Kung Lao die 100 years ago? Well, you are not wrong, but let you be assured, this is a different Kung Lao. It will be explained later. Always up training, huh? Don't you ever take a break? Liu Kang laughs as the two students walk and talk through the temple. Today is the big day, Kung Lao. I cannot mess this up. Neither can you. Kung Lao looked with an annoyed face. Oh, come on. I am more than prepared. I can't wait to kick your ass and claim my place under Lord Raiden's wings. Oh, really? Well, put them up, Great One. Let's see what you, how well you can do. Kung Lao laughed as they started training together. Life at the temple seemed great, but life isn't so great everywhere. The Hollywood Backlanes. These are the neighborhoods where all the low-life celebrities spend the last of their money drinking beer and get, taking drugs. This is usually their lowest point. But for Johnny Cage, it's only the beginning. A party is being held at this mega mansion. It's late afternoon. Everyone is drunk to their core. Booze and cocaine is everywhere. And at the height of the party is Johnny, Johnny Cage, an ex-MMA fighter turned action movie star. At a time, Johnny Cage was at the top of fame. Everyone knew him, and everyone worshipped him. That is till his movies dropped in quality, 
and he started getting on drugs. His life was all about party, and it was showing. Woohoo! Let's get this party fucking going! Come on! Turn up the music! The party started cheering as music was blasted to 100. The neighbors started getting real upset too about it. So much that one neighbor decided to pop by for a visit. Knock, knock, knock. Hey, more party people! Johnny opened the door to see an angry neighbor with his phone out. Your party is too loud. This needs to be shut down. <laughs> what? <laughs> nah, nah, it's just getting started. Come, come on, you're probably just thirsty. No! This is over, or I will call the cops. <laughs> the cops, huh? <laughs> okay, okay. Stop the music, stop the music. I have an announcement. Everyone stopped dancing to look at Johnny Cage, the neighbor getting ready to go back to his house. So, this dipshit wants us to stop the party. He thinks it's too loud. But he isn't man enough to do anything about it but call the cops. The party people booed the neighbor as they threw red cups at him. That is it. I'm calling the cops. Johnny runs and grabs the neighbor by his arm. You're not calling anyone, pal. Johnny then sidekicks the neighbor right in the stomach. The partygoers rage in excitement as the DJ turns the music back on and Johnny kicks the neighbor out of his house. The party starts to go on and on as Johnny does a shot of glory. Outside, the neighbor calls the cops. Meanwhile, a chase happens. The rainy streets of Japan. Someone trying to sell you something at any chance. A man is being chased down alleyways. He is running as fast as he can, jumping over stands and tables, climbing up rooftops and buildings. Chasing him is a woman, all black gear, armored from top to bottom. She's keeping up with the man well, and they are running far. The man finds himself trapped stuck in a dead-end alley. The woman holds a gun up to the man. She speaks. You're under arrest, asshole. <laughs> I can't believe I got caught by the legendary Sonya Blade. Take a picture. Sonya Blade, a lieutenant in the Special Forces, a secret ops group in the military designed to take down the messy people secretly. All right, Axel. I'm going to ask you this one time and one time only. Where's Kano? Axel laughed under his breath. Long gone, sweetheart. With your little commander, too. <laughs> Sonya kicks Axel in the face and proceeds to punch him in the face again and again. You think I'm playing, Axel? I'm not afraid to kill a black dragon. And I ain't afraid to die, sweetheart. Sonya knocks Axel out, knowing he won't give her any information. She puts Axel in handcuffs and radios to her team. Break to home base. I got Axel. But he's not telling me anything. I'm bringing him back. Over. Sonya won't get anything out of Axel. So she accepts defeat. But enough of this rainy Japan. We got a fight to watch. Students line up on the rafters as ceremonial drums start to play throughout the temple. Bo Rai Cho takes the stand. Attention! This fight will commence! Liu Kang walks out on the mat. He waits for his opponent. Liu Kang looks up and sees someone watching him from the stands. Lord Raiden. He had heard of the legends, but he didn't know if they were really true. 
Kung Lao walks out onto the mat as well. He smiles at Liu Kang and is obviously more excited. Bo Rai Cho speaks to the fighters. This fight will determine who trains under Lord Raiden. The first person to three points wins. Liu Kang and Kung Lao both bow to each other and then bow to Bo Rai Cho. They put their fist up and prepare to fight. Liu Kang, are you ready? Yes, Master. Kung Lao, are you ready? Absolutely. Fight! The two students run at each other, both throwing punches, both blocking. Both students are equal in skill. Kung Lao ducks under one of Liu Kang's punches and kicks Liu Kang in the chest. Point! Kung Lao! <laughs> well, Liu Kang, is that all you got? I'm just getting started. Liu Kang throws a rapid fire of punches. Kung Lao tries to block them all, but fails to block one. Point! Liu Kang! Kung Lao starts to get annoyed. He starts to throw harder punches. Liu Kang kicks up high towards the face, but it's dodged by Kung Lao. Kung Lao counters it by slamming Liu Kang to the ground and hitting Liu Kang in the chest. Point! Kung Lao! Come on! Let's finish this! Kung Lao rushes towards Liu Kang and throws a flurry of kicks. Liu Kang ducks under those kicks and throws a hard punch to Kung Lao's face. Point! Liu Kang! Ugh! Come on! Bro, calm down. Just, just come on! Kung Lao immediately attacks Liu Kang with many elbows and knees. Liu Kang blocks those knees and elbows and attempts to tackle, but misses. Kung Lao then turns around and does a running kick right to Liu Kang's face. Point! Winner! Woohoo! The students clap for Kung Lao as he is over-celebrating. Good match, man. Yeah, you did great. Just not spectacular. <laughs> as Kung Lao celebrates, Lord Raiden starts coming down from the stand. Bo Raicho sees this and makes an announcement. Attention! Lord Raiden has chosen. Oh, shit. Well, see you in a couple months, Liu Kang. Students, I am Lord Raiden. The Mortal Kombat Tournament is nigh, and I need the best students to join me on my quest. This fight showed me who I should take. Liu Kang, you have been chosen. I have? Kung Lao stood there confused and angry. <laughs> but Lord, uh, all due respect, I won that fight. I have made my choice. Now move on. But I move on. Liu Kang, meet me at the Cassian docks with your luggage tomorrow. Liu Kang nodded at Raiden. Kung Lao stormed out of the arena. Liu Kang ran after him. <laughs> Kung Lao, wait. I didn't know he would do that. <laughs> yeah, no. It's fine. Go be a hero, chosen one. Kung Lao! <sighs> Shit. Liu Kang is very conflicted, but knows he has to do this for Lord Raiden. But while Liu Kang got the lo opportunity of a lifetime, Johnny Cage is dealing with much worse. Johnny Cage wakes up in a jail cell. He is very droggy and all over the place. Uh, I hate hangovers. Shit. Johnny Cage becomes aware of his surroundings and sees he's in jail. He gets that sick feeling inside him now. Oh, shit. What the hell did I do now? Johnny Cage sat up on the dirty floor of his cell and just thought about how he got there. A guard slammed his baton against the bars and started unlocking the cell. You've been bailed out, Mr. Cage. <laughs> Great. The less I have to stay in this shithole, the better. Johnny wondered who bailed him out. As far as he's concerned, 
No one would know he'd be in here. As Johnny walked out of the police station, he sees a strange man. This man has a suit, white long hair, slicked back into a pony, and a cane. Johnny Cage, we need to talk. Are you the guy that bailed me out? The man nodded at Johnny. Listen, man, if you did this whole thing for an autograph, I commend you, but I ain't giving out anything. I don't want your gifts, Mr. Cage. My name is Raiden, and I am recruiting. Johnny looked at the man confused. Have you ever heard of Mortal Kombat? Mortal what? Thought so. Mortal Kombat is a tournament for the realms. A battle where whoever gets out on top gets ever closer to invading another. Wh what the hell are you talking about? I know you how your life has fallen apart, Mr. Cage. Wait, 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 wait. What the, what the fuck are you talking about? All right, you don't know a goddamn thing. You haven't released a movie in eight years. You are in debt. You spend money you don't even have. Your drug use has caused all of your friends and family to give up on you. How the hell do you know that? I know a lot of things, Mr. Cage. And I know that you are alone. And that you are suffering. Johnny took a heck of a second to think about himself. Could he really be this alone? Bad people are coming to invade our world. And this Mortal Kombat tournament is our only way to stop them. Let this be a chance for you to redeem yourself. Okay, and, and, and how am I supposed to believe all this mumbo-jumbo? Raiden smirked as his eyes started going blue. Look up. Johnny looked up as the sky turned from clear day to thunderstorms in seconds. Believe it or not, Johnny, you need this. Meet me at Cassian Docks tomorrow, East China. Be ready. Johnny stood there in the parking lot, confused. Johnny tried to go find the man, but he was long gone. Raiden was off trying to pursue another person. Special Forces Home Base, Japan. Axel is being put in a holding cell, and Sonya has reached dead end after dead end. She suddenly hears commotion outside of her office. What is it? A Special Forces op tells her. Someone is here to see you, Lieutenant. Send them up to my office. Sonya waits at her desk for this person to come in. As she looks at this man walking up to her office, he looks strange. He has a suit on, white long hair, put in a pony, and a cane. All right, who the hell are you and what do you want? Hello, Sonya Blade. My name is Raiden. Pleasure to finally meet you. Yeah, 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 who are you? I am here to discuss your mission. I know you are hunting a black dragon member known as Kano. Sonya is confused. This is a secret mission. No civilian should know about this. Alright, are you FBI? CIA? <laughs> no, no, no. I am just here to give you an opportunity. Alright, spill it. Well, this Kano has been hired by a man named Shang Tsung. I am trying to figure out why. Who the hell is Shang Tsung? A very bad man that looks for the destruction of all mankind. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to need you to tell me whatever you're doing, or else I'm going to have to put you in intense interrogation. That is truly not needed. There is a tournament called Mortal Kombat. 
a tournament where I'm going to need to defend our people. If you join me in taking down Shang Tsung, you can get Kano and your commander, Jackson Briggs. How the hell do you know about Jax? Just if you decide to join me, come to Gassy and Docks. No military. And if you don't believe me, Kano will remain free. Sonya saw as Raiden sat up and walked out of her office. Sonya then blinked for a second and he was gone. Sonya called in one of her operatives. Y yes ma'am, you called me? Call me a chopper. I'm going to Cassian Docks. You're in charge while I'm gone. May I ask where you're going? To get Kano. It's 10 p.m., and we are at an empty dock. All there is is one big wooden freighter. Two cars pull up to the docks. Out of one comes Liu Kang. Out of the other is Johnny Cage. Johnny speaks to Liu Kang. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, my name is Liu Kang. And you are? <laughs> you don't know who I am? I'm Johnny Cage. And I'm supposed to know who that is? Guess not. So, are you here because some weird old white guy too? Do you mean Lord Raiden? Lord Raiden is not weird. Oh, he's a lord now. <laughs> well, anyone that has weird glowing blue eyes is cuckoo in my book. Um, whatever you say. Both men hear a chopper landing down in the docks. Who the hell is this birdie? I do not know, Mr. Cage. Okay, okay, you don't gotta do all that formal bullcrap. Just call me Johnny. Oh, my apologies, Johnny. <laughs> yeah. The helicopter lands in the docks and Sonya Blade walks out. Who's this chick? I do not know. Sonya walks over to the two men and speaks. Do any of y'all know Lord Raiden? Oh, yeah, yes, sweetheart. Luke Kang, I got this, I got this. Uh, we are waiting for him, but, uh, what's your name? Oh, my God. That didn't go your way, did it, Johnny? Yeah, 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 shut up, Luke Kang. The trio wait in this empty dock, not knowing if they got stood up. But from the sky, a lightning bolt lands right in front of the trio, revealing Lord Raiden. He talks to the trio. Welcome. I'm so happy all three of you decided to join me. Now, this trip we are about to take will be long, hard, and dangerous. But I believe you three are strong enough to withstand it. Uh, I'm sorry, are we just going to ignore the fact that you came out of the sky? Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with the man, baby. <laughs> man, baby? Liu Kang, did you just call me a man, baby? Yeah, you going to cry about it, sweetheart? <laughs> oh, I like you. Enough. We must get going now. Everyone, on the ship. We have a tournament to get to. The trio started putting their stuff on the ship. Raiden lifted the anchor, and they were off. But on the side of the ship, it seems someone has snuck on. To be continued. <laughs>